Hey, welcome. I'm Danny O, aka Atalaya, and this is From the Speaker, a sonic social with industry insiders and artists from the world of music. Hailing from Birmingham and living on the magical island of Ibiza, Spain since 2012, Michael Boland is a tour manager, radio professional, and music enthusiast who works for Cafe Mambo. How are you doing, my friend? <laughs> Very good, Danny. Thanks for. Uh... Thanks for pulling me out of my normal Saturday uh, routine. <laughs> Good to be here. Happy days, man. Nice to have you here. Let's have a little uh, chat about your background and how you got into working with Mambo in your original role there. Yeah, so I've been working with the Mambo group since 2016, April 2016, um, which was uh, a couple of years after I first moved to Ibiza full time. And it's funny because a lot of people ask me how that came about. And um, it's, it's a funny story, really. And it, it, typical Jason Bai. Um, he, I was talking to him. So rewinding a bit further back, years back, I came to Ibiza, did a couple of seasons as a worker. Uh, and I used to hang around in Mambo quite a bit. I used to come down there late afternoon and daytimes and literally put my laptop on the bar behind the booth and, and do work. Well, pretend to be working yeah uh i got you know i used to talk to the likes of jason jason by and andy baxter alex wolfenden and some of the residents back then and got to know them fairly well and particularly jason stayed in contact with it and, and andy baxter being from birmingham so back in early 2016 i think it was i was speaking to jason and saying that um i was kind of looking out for a new line of work here in Ibiza and he said um, he said oh you should come and work for the agency Mambo have got this new agency and he said the name Mambo Land Agency and I thought he was winding me up somehow that he was making a joke because my surname's Boland yeah so Mambo Land it was like right okay yeah and I, I really thought he was messing around and then he forwarded me I think an email or looped me in an email with Pablo, my good colleague at the agency now, and could see this name and website it was a real thing, Mambo Land Agency. And, and so it was kind of from there, it was like, okay, I think I definitely have to work with these guys because my surname is in the name anyway. Yeah. Good fit, good look. So that was back in 2016. And um, yeah, so back then, they brought me in primarily to assist with growing the Mambo tours, doing more events, primarily in Europe, but also worldwide. Um, and my background before that had been, I'd done some, I'd worked in commercial radio basically for uh, over 10 years in the UK. So names like Galaxy FM when they were around, I don't know if people listening remember Galaxy so yeah, I used to work with them for many years and, and a few other local commercial stations in, in Birmingham um, and worked kind of across the spectrum within a commercial radio station from starting off literally in, in my days at university as a, as a promotion on the promotions team, street crew as they call it or whatever. Um, and then worked up into yeah, the studio environment producing one of the breakfast shows um, and, and then through marketing and then into sort of more the commercial department. So sales and advertising. Um, and it was good, good fun years. And, and especially Galaxy obviously um, got to work with a number of DJs and um, sort of that kind of tied in nicely with my interest uh, in Ibiza anyway. I think the first year I came out to Ibiza was 2005 and two years later, did my first season working here in 2007 and, and, and all of that time I was working at Galaxy back in Birmingham. And it was actually through Galaxy sort of helped me gain a few more contacts to, to come out here and, and work for the summer. So, so yeah, so background in, um, in radio, that was what I knew really from, from leaving university and then um, kind of coming to Ibiza was obviously, yeah, a whole new world in itself. Um, and you know, obviously, the first day I came to Ibiza, the first 
holiday and was just like blown away. There's nothing like it. Anyone who's yeah. gone to any of those clubs in Ibiza, Pasha, Space, particularly when it was there, were just like just nothing on that scale, you know, anything like what you've been to in the UK or anywhere else. So it was just incredible. Um, and then, yeah, obviously fast forward uh, some years and I, I'd gone from sort of being a, a punter, as it were, at Mambo. But then, you know, the first couple of years I went, it was that sitting down on the rocks, the sandy beach yeah. outside of Mambo. There wasn't the big terrace that we see now and the, um, the walkway put through. It was a bit more, um, how would you say, rough and ready. Mm. Uh, and yeah, it was great, you know, great memories from then. And uh, it's quite funny now to sort of be working at Cafe Mambo, part of a company, now a very big company, having come from being sort of like a, a fan, as it were. Yeah. <laughs> Sitting down with the box and the sand many years ago, and literally would never have dreamt it in, in a million years. So, yeah. yeah. It, it really sounds fateful. It's a, it's a really fascinating backstory, and it's amazing how these things all tie in together when you when you hear people's backstory and how they ended up in Ibiza or having their success over here and it all feels like a, a magical moment and a culmination things really coming together and it certainly yeah. looks like it was it was that way for you and your journey has continued and just grown bigger and better over the years as you've cemented your role at Mambo and seen the world along the way as well yeah pretty much literally I mean I think you know me and you were in Doha a couple of years ago, yeah, um, you know, I've been to Dubai and uh, a few other far-flung places. Um, some of them much better than others. <laughs> oh, without a doubt, mate. Yeah, let's let's not slay any any places, but um, been been to a few dodgy spots. Um, but yeah, seeing the world at the same time, it's 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 a pretty amazing life and lots of good things to look back on. So far, yeah, yeah, totally, yeah, and I, and I think right at the moment, you know, with uh, with all the events of this year just I'm kind of looking back and feeling grateful for all the places I've been to and seen with Cafe Mambo on the tours. Um, you know, my, my main role there for the last few years has been a tour manager, events and tour manager. So um, I think the first year, the first year I joined in 24, 2016, that year we did 37 events with Cafe Mambo. The second year, 2017, we did 45. And then by 2018, we'd gone up to 80, 90. We were not far off 100. And then uh, same last year. Yeah. Uh, you know, particularly with things like the new residency we started in Dubai, which was amazing, um, where we were doing weekly events there through the winter months. So, yeah, just in the short space of time I've been there, it's, um, things have grown and it felt like we were really on the cusp of for, for this year was going to be some really big stuff, you know, breaking into a few new festivals. And then obviously Corona came and, um, mm. and pulled the rug out from underneath everyone. And, and as you know, that the electronic music scene has been one of the biggest casualties from coronavirus. Um, you know, we cannot have large scale events of any kind. Um, so yes, it's kind of put the damper on everything. Um, I think luckily it seems next year there's positive signs now on the horizon for Ibiza we're hearing good things um, and I just hope that uh, you know we start getting a bit of sense back and, and just thinking we've got to we've got to carry on here we've got to live with the virus um, and uh, you know young healthy people um can't just be expected to lock down forever and, and stop yeah. everything. Yeah, completely agree with you. I mean, everyone's going to have a different point on the spectrum uh, with regard to their opinions on how strict or otherwise things should be. But yeah, things have to open back up now. It's it's time to adapt and adjust in a sensible way because uh, the vast majority of healthy people sitting at home doing absolutely nothing is is not helping the matter in my opinion so yeah let's hope for a, a, a brighter 2021 i mean we're, i think we're very fortunate even to have the the cafe culture um open and up and running in ibiza um, for, for some of the summer at least you know very lucky to have that small scale events 
Um, but yeah, hopefully there's, yeah, a, yeah. there's a lot more uh, moderation and adaption for next year. And it looks to be that way with the uh, vaccination yeah. coming in. Let's let's see anyway. It, it's just interesting there. You reminded me of something about, yeah, the, the way that this summer just gone at Mambo was, uh, I mean, obviously it was a very different year. We opened uh, mid-July in the end, which was, you know, pretty late into the season for, for us or for anyone in Ibiza. Normally Mambo is open by mid-May. And um, so we, we opened mid-July and I think the first two, three weeks we were open were, were really busy. It was lively. It was it was great. And then, of course, early August, the UK announced that they were introducing a travel quarantine for anyone coming back from Spain and a few other countries. And that kind of, from that point on, I mean, I thought, and I think a few other members of staff thought, you know, that's it because Mambo relies very heavily on UK visitors. That's that's sort of been a bit of a tradition. Um, Mambo clientele are generally all from the UK. So yeah. that seemed to be a major curveball. But um, we actually carried on and, and we went through into October. And uh, it was really interesting because... A lot of people that came to Mambo this summer, speaking to them, were there for the first time. Right. A lot of them were, they were younger people, I'd say somewhere between 21 and 30. And um, everyone that I spoke to all said the same. They said that they really loved it and had a great time. They were enjoying the island, being quieter and almost without all the nightlife. And... Um, you know, some of the comments we've had on social media from from this, some of from people said that they they loved Cafe Mambo this year, as it was almost like the first couple of summers when it first opened, when it was it was more like a cafe by the sea, you know, far more relaxed, um, without the sort of whole party vibe. I mean, this summer we've had we've had we have had to endure the fact that it's been forbidden to dance, yeah, <laughs> which is. I found quite a bizarre rule. I Draconian. mean, Draconian. Very odd, very odd. Um, so you couldn't dance uh, mm. despite DJs playing, which is like, it was, it was you know, a, yeah. a bizarre thing going on. But um, overall, yeah, I think people did, people kind of tuned in a lot more as well to the sunset and the sunset vibe, which is originally, you know, Mambo started, I guess, as more of a, the chill out sunset cafe they never obviously expected back then it, it would develop into this all the big djs coming and pre-parties and, and it being more of a no, known for that as well um so yeah it was it was it was actually quite nice to experience that this summer um and kind of i think yeah everyone really just appreciated um the fact that they could get away and escape the uk or wherever it was and it was it was very relaxed the sunsets are obviously still there, always the same and incredible. Um, so yeah, it was it was special this year. But I think I think everyone's kind of now itching for things to return to at least some level of where it was before for next summer. Without a doubt, yeah. I mean, itching perhaps more like ready to explode. Some people are just absolutely desperate to get out, and it's it's going to be a, a pretty unique experience. Um, if and when the the first proper events or parties happen, I mean, I do tend to favour the the more chilled, laid back um, atmosphere myself. Anyway, the sunset vibe, the the terrace culture, the cafe culture, and it's it's been a very different summer, but very very special. Possibly the most memorable one, actually. And to get to do the closing party again and to be there in those final few weeks, yes, the the vibe was really really different, but just incredibly special it was just it was memorable because we got to have it and yeah. we didn't we took it for granted less than less than ever before so yeah yeah, yeah. Lo lots of positives we've we've managed to take from 2020 uh, yourself in your your own career and uh cafe mambo in in general loads of positives yeah. to to take yeah and i think people who uh, live on the island this summer although it's been it has been really tough for a lot of people because you know we're on an island where people get four or five months of the year really to make most of their income for, for the rest of the year or certainly anyone that's involved in anything related to tourism which is probably 
85, 90% of the economy here mm. um, relies on the island being busy from May through till end of September, October. And we just didn't get that this summer. However, um, you know, those who were okay or could do something else um, uh, or, or, you know, some have been furloughed the whole time. And um, I think a lot of the residents kind of appreciated it in some ways because, um, yeah, the island was quieter, the, the roads were clearer, the, the sea was incredibly clean this summer, everyone was noting there was yeah. less boats out there, less pollution. Um, and we had we had some really incredible experiences just towards the end of lockdown as they were they were easing the lockdown. There was a period of about a week, I think it was literally a week, where they started allowing um, parents back out of the house with their children for whatever it was, a couple of hours a day. Because that was a strange thing here. Although Spain's quite a family-orientated place, um, our lockdown um, was, the, the, the children were not allowed out of the house at any point. It was it was staggering. It was absolutely crazy. Yeah. Um, you know, and I've got a young lad who's two and a half. So in when that, I think it was like end of May sort of time, and they they allowed you to take the kids out for some exercise or to do something. And um, we took him, or I took him one or two afternoons to some of the beaches. We went one time to Cala Gracia Neto, which is um, in San, just on the edge of San Antonio. Beautiful little bay. And um, there was no one else there, mm. literally no one else. And, you know, I've still got a couple of photos from that afternoon. And um, I was looking at it thinking, this must literally have been like how the island was 60 plus years ago um, for that time of year, you know, where you could literally go down to a beach and not see anyone else. And um, yeah. and it was amazing, you know, and obviously Lex, when he's older, when I show him those pictures, it'll be, it'll be you know, something really special. So there was a few moments like that. Um, and, and yeah, generally, you know, we've, I've probably been to the beach this summer a lot more than I would usually. Um, and, and the beaches, because I just kind of avoid it in the summer because they just get, you know, the beach is just packed and, um, yeah. you know, as nice as it is going. So it, this year, it's kind of like we've had the island back to ourselves. Yeah. In, um, which has been nice, but... You know, obviously, the way that the island economy works, it's not it's not sustainable. It's not something we can enjoy for forever. So, um, yeah, we need we need people to come back to Ibiza next year. Hundred percent, mate. Yeah, it is. Um, it is lovely, but it is quite close to a feeling of being retired. I find when it's it's uh, out of tourist season or the winter time is there. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's fine. It's it's kind of okay up until about December, Christmas time. The weather yeah. stays pretty good. I mean, even now it's it's still 20, 22 degrees most days. Oh, beautiful. And then once we get into January and February, those two months are really, it does go cold and you get a lot of storms. It's windy and and, and most things are closed. You know, there's, there's very little life on the island. A lot of people leave the island completely in January or just shut down. Yeah. Yeah. Still beautiful though. And, you know, I absolutely loved it. It's, it's completely unique in the winter and it's a really special place to be if if you are headstrong as you say and you can you can cope with the the loneliness factor if you're by yourself or you've got family there and you've got enough to be getting on with and it's a it's a it's a paradise it's it is yeah. cut off but it is an island that's how it is and i, and I think the, the island has to have that breather in the winter months as well mm. it, it just yeah. has to because you get i mean i don't know how many million visitors it is in the summer now mm. but you know, the island really can't actually cope with that many visitors. It just about does. You know, the infrastructure isn't really there and um, uh, there are a number of problems with the levels of tourism uh, every summer. So it is unsustainable. That, would, that level of tourism would be unsustainable year round. So it kind of definitely needs those winter months to, to kind of pause and breathe and um, allow the sea to kind of, yeah, clear itself and yep. and all that kind of stuff and it's it's that time of year as well especially if you again if you work with tourists or in tourism in the summer you kind of need that time in the winter to take a break 
just uh, enjoy enjoy the island. You know, I mean, as you know, I do I try and get outdoors quite often uh, and go hiking or you know walking around the coast and just again those kind of things you don't get to do in the summer because um, you just avoid certain areas. But um, in the winter, yeah, it's, it's beautiful to uh, Ibiza is stunning scenery. Um, so yeah, it's, it's good to take all that in. Yeah. Well, I've been a few places in the world now, as of you, and I'd, I'd say Ibiza's up there with the most beautiful of them. Yeah, totally. It's yeah, all there to be explored. I, I think um, I think we we are seeing a bit more of a shift the last few years. To I think the the government here, and the tourist board, are trying to diversify Ibiza's image a lot more. I mean, Ibiza's certainly gone more up market in the last ten years. Um, you know, we've, we've now got a load more four and five star hotels, um, whereas Ibiza was kind of this really cheap budget place to come traditionally. I think the island is, is trying to mature finally and uh, it knows also it's got to compete um, with with increased uh, travel market. People are going much further afield now on holidays because flights are cheaper. Yes. So Ibiza's got to keep uh, keep appealing to a wider market. So, you know, things like cycling holidays are now pretty popular here in the off, in the off season or like this time of year, hiking um, and uh, yeah, just like lo- there's a lot of other activities and loads of stuff going on. Also, restaurants have sort of there's definitely been an increase in restaurants and fine dining. Um, here in, in the last few years. So um, it's definitely trying to mature and appeal to um, different niche markets. So yeah, it's good to see. I think I think um, there's still a lot of <laughs> development to be done. I think Ibiza's kind of still in this in-between stage where it's not quite sure at the moment which direction it's, it's going in and maybe trying to, trying to go in too many directions. I don't know, but... Um, but yeah, I think yeah. Uh, a lot of people sort of lament the loss of the old Ibiza or whatever that is. And, you know, oh, clubs aren't the same or whatever's not the same. But nowhere stays the same at all. Completely. Ever. Yeah. You know, totally. Things are always evolving and changing and, and improving. So um, that's just, that's life, isn't it? So Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, Ibiza had been in a, a process of transition even in the years coming up before COVID, there'd been big changes and, and Sana and the West End had disappeared. And they were clearly trying to attract a, a different type of people under the, the new government. And it seemed to be working well in a lot of ways. It, was, it wasn't for everyone, but it was, it was cleaning the image of the island up quite a lot. Yeah. Well, Ibiza, you know, there's those things that will always be here, the, the sunsets, the incredible beaches, that's it. Um, and, yeah. and there are, you know, there's still, there are the old parts of Ibiza, um, little snippets here and there of some of the more traditional Ibiza, some of the older traditional style restaurants. You've got the old town in Ibiza town, the old Delt Villa, that will always have that appeal. Um, will always keep people coming. Um, it'll take a lot more than a pandemic, I think, to um, to wipe Ibiza off the map. So, yeah. Definitely, mate. Yeah. Well, they've adapted, and and so have you. You've you've taken the positives out with this year. You've you've done really well, and you've got some other projects going into winter. I think to keep you busy, haven't you? You've... Yeah, yeah. Well, I've been really fortunate because with Mambo being um, a fairly big group now, um, and it's not just well, Cafe Mambo itself is not just a venue in the summer. It's it's become a kind of iconic international brand. Um, as you know, before this, we were doing 100 events or so uh, a year all, uh, all around the world. And of course, that doesn't slow down in winter. In fact, we we'll probably do more events in the winter. Um, so uh, now that that has all come to a stop, luckily I've been able to kind of sidestep in the business. They uh, asked me in the summer to get involved in the marketing team and come and start helping out with social media instead. Um, which I kind of was just self-taught really, um, picked up bits along the way of, of being a tour manager with Mambo, you know, capturing some of the highlights we were doing there. Um, and, and yeah, so uh, I'm now actually 
managing the Cafe Mambo social media across the winter, which um, which is a fairly big task actually. See, I was yeah, quite surprised imagine. the last few weeks to to sort of you know get to grips with it, and um, it's it's a big brand. You know, we've got a lot of followers. We've got you know well in excess of a million followers that well we've got nearly a million followers just on facebook alone yeah so yeah, it's, it's pretty a big huge. audience and uh, we've got to keep them constantly engaged especially at a time like now when a lot of the audience in the uk is in lockdown so um you know we want to keep everyone happy with uh, sharing music and memories and and i think a lot of what we are focusing on at the moment is um yeah, looking at happier memories of summers gone by and trying to push forward to next summer uh, and just people give them confidence that things will return and, you know, we will have a summer again. Yeah, yeah it's it's a really good way to frame things and it's I think it does help a lot of people. It's certainly nice to see all the old pictures and positive chat about what's coming up and, yeah, the fact that you're still keeping things rolling and you're an important part in making all of that happen and the the radio as well you've started to i know you you're putting a lot of your efforts into um doing yeah. that show and bringing some bringing things to life there from the mambo studio and yeah maybe you can tell us a bit about that yeah so yeah sorry i'd forgotten about the uh, all important radio part but uh <laughs> Yeah, we've um, recently tried to sort of revamp, relaunch Cafe Mama Radio a little bit um, with yourself, obviously very much involved. Yeah. And um, particularly now on a Friday afternoon, we've got a new project, a live streaming session that we do every Friday afternoon from the Mambo Studios, which are literally upstairs at Cafe Mambo. And... Uh, that's headed up by Jason Bai, who's Jason's our, our longest serving Mambo resident. He's part of the furniture. Yeah, yeah, he's some boy. And, uh, and you know, Jason's great. And it's, it's actually been good fun working with him in the studio. It's been good as well for me to actually be back in a radio studio, that yeah. environment. That's it's, it's felt exciting. So, yeah, so we're getting that off the ground now every Friday afternoon. You can tune in. Um, from 4 p.m. in the UK, 5 here in uh, European time. And uh, again, I suppose it's, it's at the moment we're just trying to lift people's spirits and Definitely. start the weekend with a bit of a bang. Um, yeah. You know, get the tunes going. We live stream the sunset outside when it's there. It's not been great the last two weeks, but, um, you know, over the winter, the sunsets can be pretty impressive. So, um, you know, we, we get the cameras rolling and uh, Jason's great, great banter, great on the microphone. He is. And of course, a great DJ. You know, he's yeah. uh, he's a DJ's DJ, Jason. And, Certainly. Uh, it's, it's, good, it's good, as I say, good fun working with him. And yeah, the reactions have been good so far. Um, we seem to be getting a few regulars from uh, all over the places, actually. We, we've had quite a few listeners from South America already, um, uh, Sweden, um, one or two from Eastern Europe. So yeah, it's good. It's, it's growing. And uh, I think that'll be a nice project for us to grow across the winter. Yeah. I mean, it, it is looking and sounding good. I've obviously been around and uh, been tuned in as well since I've been back in London and yeah, nice sunset views. And Jason seems like a bit of a natural on the mic and uh, chatting away with the, the people. He is. Yeah. If you can, if you can get past his London accent, if you can understand them, yeah. International <laughs> viewers, listeners <laughs> might not really pick up a lot of it, but uh, but yeah, no, it's it's great, it's good, it's sounding good, it's looking good. Yeah, uh, th as you say, they might struggle with his accent a bit, but um, yeah, he's he's pretty heavy on the the feel good vibes, and if you don't get the accent, you'll you'll get that through the music, I think. And it, it does look to be working really well. Um, I really enjoyed it. Just tuned in the other day, and uh, yeah. I'll just say a quick thank you for joining me today. Really very much appreciated and hope to see you soon and good luck with your work going forward at Mambo and we'll we'll definitely be in touch. Thank you, Mr. Mambo Land, Michael Boland. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. Thanks a lot, Danny. Thanks for having me. I think that's beautiful.
Big thanks to Michael Boland for the chat. You can hear some of his music selections at soundcloud.com slash Bolando. For more podcasts and new music, visit atalayamusic.com and link up with me. Take it easy, people.